Good morning, everybody. I hope today is finding you well. I hope that uh, you have been getting into the Word of God. Uh, as you can tell, I haven't charged my phone again. But you know, um, that's okay. Every setback we do, you know, every time we don't get things our way, God is still on the throne. I hope you hear that. Whenever we don't get our way, God is still on the throne. And at Romans 8.28 is a promise to you and to me that God uses all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Do you believe those promises in the Bible? Yes, we're going to go through tough times. We know that the world is broken without Jesus. We did that. Our rebellion broke the world. We have sin. We have death. We have storms. We have shootings. We have murder. We have all sorts of things because we do it. It's the hardness and wickedness of our hearts that makes life so tough. Without Christ, it's unbearable. But Jesus came to take care of all of that. And sometimes we want a Jesus that we invent. We want a Jesus that we have created. We want a Jesus that, quite frankly, is too limited because our imagination is too limited. God is so listening to Buffalo. Sorry, y'all. I didn't put my phone on airplane mode today, so the phone went off. But uh, when it comes down to it, we need to make sure that we are trusting Christ and in Christ alone. Let's take a look at what the scripture says today. John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a man was sick, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus, who was sick. So the sisters sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. Let's pause there just for a minute. What I love, what I absolutely love, is Jesus had personal relationships in his life here on earth. John calls himself the disciple who Jesus loved. And here John points out, that this was more than merely a, a pastoral relationship. Jesus personally loved Lazarus and Martha and Mary. They were personal friends of his. He loved them deeply. Now, if that Jesus, who was nailed to the tree, died who rose again and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, if that Jesus rose again, surely, surely his perfect love still does that. Jesus cares and loves you personally. Doesn't mean he's going to put up with the garbage we do, but he loves you and I personally, intimately, and he desires that to be the relationship and the basis for the relationship that we have. Let's move on. When Jesus heard it, he said, The sickness will not end in death, but it's for the glory of God. Now, of course, Jesus knew that there would be a physical death, but it didn't end there. That's what he's talking about. Jesus isn't a liar. He's not a deceiver. He knew the end was not death. He also said, So that the Son of Man or excuse me, the Son of God, may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Do you hear that again? John emphasizes the point. He loved them. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after that, he said to the disciples, let us get up and go to Judea again. He loved them, so he waited. Why? It doesn't make sense. There's times when we beg to God. We beg to God, Lord, let this not be so. When we suffer loss, when our family members are sick, when there's dying, we pray and God seems to delay. But even though he loved them, for the purposes of the kingdom, 
he delayed. Even though he loved them, the answer to the request was not answered immediately, nor as they had hoped. Jesus waited. He got up after two days and went to Judea, knowing the sickness was worse. As a matter of fact, knowing that Lazarus had died. Verse 8 tells us, So Rabbi, the disciples told him just now, the Jews just tried to stone you, and you're going there again. Here comes the kicker, okay? You might recall the Jews tried to stone him. But Jesus didn't care for his personal safety. His focus mm -hmm. was the kingdom of God and the gospel. That is where our focus needs to be as well. The kingdom of God and the gospel. Glorifying God no matter the cost. Jesus responds in verse 9, Aren't there 12 hours in a day? Jesus answered. If anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. If anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm on my way to wake him up. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's asleep, he'll get well. Jesus, however, was speaking about his death, but they thought he was speaking about natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. I'm glad for you that I wasn't there so you may believe, but let's go to him. Then Thomas called the twin and said to his fellow disciples, let's go so that we may, find, we may die with him. These disciples were not seeking the Jesus that was there. They were looking for the military commander. They were looking for the restoration of Israel. They were looking for Israel to take its rightful place in the world. But Jesus didn't come for such things. Jesus came to give life, not to take it away. Jesus came to restore the world, not merely Israel, but the Israel of heaven. Those, first, as it says to Paul, you know, Paul writes in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of God, or of the gospel, sorry, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. Now listen, first to the Jew and then to the Greek. Throughout the course of Romans, Paul talks about the mission of Christ and how Paul came, or how Jesus came first to the Jew and then to the Greek to unite the world into one Israel of God. That we who are not Jewish, the Gentiles, we are grafted in to the tree, the root of, of Jesse, David. We are grafted in to that promise of Abraham. This is why he came. To resurrect the dead. And you and I, in our sin and trespasses, are dead. But sometimes we look... And we don't see things the way we want them to be. We look and politically things aren't going well. And we look and we see the state of the country and everything's not right and not yada, yada, yada. The list goes on. But the fact remains we are called to be faithful to Christ. We are called to be messengers of the gospel in spite of what happens to us. In spite of our comfort. In spite of our wants, wishes, and desires. Our limited capabilities cannot fathom the mind and the depth of the plan of God. And so... Like the disciples, even in his sarcasm, if we're to die, let us go die with him. Let us not be limited. Instead, let us surrender to the limitless God. Let us let go of our minds. Let us let go of the things that we think ought to be. And let us surrender and go with him regardless of what that means. I hope that makes sense. My prayer for you is that you're going to look at this and, and, and dive deeper into the word. Let me know what you think. Comment and, and let's see where we can go with this. Let's see what God reveals to us. And let us be bold in our faith that even should we die for him, the kingdom of God will be glorified. God will be glorified. The Son will be glorified. And we will rise to him, whether our spiritual, or our, excuse me, our physical tent is there or not.
We will rise to him in spirit and we will hear the word, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm praying for you. I love you. Follow the Christ as revealed through the scriptures and watch how he works in your life. God bless and keep you. I love you.